I get a lot of comments on my transmitter tool videos asking how I identify what every antenna does and how do I know in the first place. Well, the answer is experience, and don't get me wrong, I sometimes make mistakes, as this is a hobby. I don't work in broadcast radio or television, which is what most of my transmitter tours cover. You soon learn just by looking at an antenna what it's likely to do. As for going deeper into what channels, frequencies, multiplexes, services and everything else an antenna might be used for, well, that's a much harder task, and I have a few tools that I use to help me out with that. So I thought I'd put together the simplest guide I can on this subject, so the next time you're passing a transmitter site, you'll have more of an idea what things are doing. Now this is a vast topic, so in this instalment we'll cover television, band 2, which is FM radio on 88 to 108 MHz, and band 3, which is DAB radio. I've included the most common types of antennas and what it is they're used for. Of course, in every case, there's an exception to the rule, but this is an overview and a guide that best suits most transmitter sites across the UK. Let's start with television. You usually have a main site, a medium power relay of that main site, although some of this size are standalone, and a very small relay of a main site, although some of these relays from other relays. I told you it was complex. I'll start with what I'll call a main site, an area's main transmitter. Up here in the northwest, that means Winter Hill or Moyley Park as an example, and for London, Crystal Palace and the likes. At the top of Moyley Park, you'll see a group of UHF television panels. These are actually glass reinforced plastic covers that conceal individual elements. Further down, you can see a much larger array of UHF television panels. One is the main transmit array, and the other is the reserve. You might think that the larger one is the main, but it is in fact the reserve. Some are the same or a similar size. Reserve antennas are used in the event of a failure or maintenance works on the main antenna. Sometimes works near the main antenna might require it to have its power turned down or off, so a backup is always available if needed. A common manufacturer of these panels is a company called Allen Dick. The silver structure above the reserve array is a liquid filled damper to reduce oscillations on the tower itself. Now let's move to what I'll call a medium power relay. These are lower powered relay sites that primarily serve areas that lie in the shadows of hills that are blocked from receiving signals from the main sites, or areas that can't receive signals from the main site. Some sites of this size may not always be a relay. Some main sites do have cylinders at the top like this I should point out. Greater Manchester has an abundance of these medium power relays that have UHF television cylinders at the top. Saddleworth is a great example. So is Glossop. Not all sit on radio towers as such. Barnet Gasholder near London is home to a UHF cylinder. The cylinders can vary in size and are usually white. Again, they're usually covered with a glass reinforced plastic shroud. It's my understanding that some contain dipoles and others contain slot antennas. Buxton is another nice example which has a UHF television cylinder at the top. Some medium and low power relays such as Oldham North look visually similar to other sites that have cylinders, but they utilise small arrays of panels for UHF television. Some use four panels in different configurations. Again, Oldham North Relay is a nice example. Some extremely low powered infill sites such as Old Trafford Stadium use four panel arrays to serve just one street that's blocked by the stadium itself. Clandona is a sizeable mass that features supplementary panels near to the main array. Some relays don't have shrouded cylinders at the top but rather exposed dipoles. Birch Vale is an example of this. The number of dipoles can vary too. Birch Vale has eight but I've seen relays that use just four. Small relays tend to use log periodic antennas. Dog Hill is a tower of a reasonable size and utilises four sets of two log periodics for UHF television. Langley on the other hand is nothing more than a telegraph pole with eight of them at the top. Lower down you'll find a single log periodic pointing towards a larger relay or more often a main site. Small relays tend to be used as infill sites for low population areas surrounded by high terrain. Broadbottom is a tiny relay with just one transmit and one receive log periodic, and in this instance the transmit antenna is at the bottom while the receive is at the top. 
This is due to the height of the feed transmitter and the location of the area the relay is serving. Prestbury has two transmit log periodics at the top. Stocksbridge, for example, has eight, but you get the general idea. At places like Moyley Park, there's eight used, but they're shrouded in a protective casing, probably due to their altitude. They tend to cross each other in this way in order to create a wide radiation pattern or cover more than one area. When I talk about receive, all relays and indeed main sites need to be fed. The main sites are generally fed by fibre, although most have microwave links or other antennas for backup and emergency purposes. When looking at television sites, there are some indicators as to how it may be being fed. Some are fed by fibre, some are fed by fibre and RF. For example, some multiplexes at one site can be fed by one method and some by another. Medium and large sites that have transmit panels and cylinders tend to have troughs or panels for receive, but there are exceptions. This is a trough. Here at Saddleworth it points towards Winter Hill. These have been replaced since the digital switchover and the 700MHz clearance works, where Spectrum was freed up for mobile phones. At one time it would have been receiving its television feed from Winter Hill and using that feed to relay the signal out from Saddleworth. Glossop has an old trough pointing towards Winter Hill, but many of these have been removed, presumably when time and cost allows. Clandonna has two troughs. One provided the RBL program feed for ITV and Channel 4, and RBS for BBCs 1 and 2. Nowadays, these long oblong panels tend to do the receive work. Again, Saddleworth's points towards Winter Hill. Birch Vale is also a relay of Winter Hill with a receive trough pointing that way. Shatton Edge has one pointing towards the nearby Tideswell Moor, which in turn relays Emily Moor. So, Emily Moor feeds Tideswell Moor, and Tideswell Moor feeds Shatton Edge. Birch Vale and Saddleworth have panels that point towards Winter Hill. Some of Saddleworth's multiplexes are fibre fed, just to make things more complicated. The log periodics at really small sites do the same thing. They receive from a larger site and feed the transmitter, usually in rural locations. Langley, Broadbottom, Prestbury, and Dog Hill are all prime examples. The much bigger Saddleworth has two log periodics pointing to Winter Hill for unknown reasons. And the enormous Barnet gas holder is fed this way too. So, with the basics of UHF television out of the way, let's look at VHF FM radio, also known as Band 2. This is a very broad topic, with many types of antennas and exceptions to the rule in place, so I'll just cover the main types you're likely to see. There are numerous types of radio stations that use this infrastructure, BBC National and Classic FM, Regional and Local Commercial Radio, BBC Local Radio and Community Radio. This is a mixed polarised array for National Band 2 at Home Moss. This is classed as a main site, and so the array radiates BBC radios 1, 2, 3 and 4 as well as Classic FM. They tend to share infrastructure at many sites, but not all. Again, Alan Dick is a big manufacturer of these sorts of arrays. They consist of large cross dipole radiating elements that give an omnidirectional radiation pattern using three panels per tier around a triangular tower. A combiner allows all five radio stations to radiate from what is essentially one antenna. The structure behind these antennas is a screen assembly, which I think helps to control the radiation pattern. Like any main site, there's usually a reserve antenna lower down the mast. Clandonna has a Marconi mixed polarisation antenna for National Band 2, which as you can see has slightly different looking radiating elements. Buxton is a smaller site, with a one bay two sided mixed polarised array. The output power tends to dictate the size of the antenna. At smaller sites such as Saddleworth, BBC National is radiated via two of these dipoles that are commonly used by the BBC. Again, a combiner enables BBC Radios 1, 2, 3 and 4 to be radiated by the two vertical dipoles. This is a 95 watt transmitter, so the antenna is perfect. Now let's look at local and community radio. Allerton Park for example radiates BBC Radio Merseyside at 7.1kW, 
Greatest Hits Radio at 7.57 kW and Hits Radio Liverpool at 8.2 kW, all from this four-bay, two-sided antenna consisting of horizontal dipoles. Another common type of antenna used in local radio is the crossed polarised two or three element Yagi. Here at Saddleworth, four of them are stacked to radiate Hits Radio Manchester at 4 kW. North Manchester FM uses two two-element Yagis, one vertical and one horizontal, to radiate from Kentmere Court. Greatest Hits Radio, formerly High Peak Radio, uses a two-element Yagi at Glossop. Now let's look at folded dipoles. It doesn't help that many radio applications use folded dipoles for marine, the utilities, the emergency services and all sorts of other things. Silk FM from Croker Hill in Macclesfield uses a pair of phased dipoles. High Peak Radio at Buxton uses just a single folded dipole. All FM uses a pair of stacked folded dipoles from Bickerdyke Court. Another common type of antenna is a set of four or eight slanted dipoles at 45 degrees which provide an omnidirectional mixed polarised signal. Heritage Radio has a set of four on the top of Duffield Court in Manchester. Canalside Radio in Bollington near Macclesfield also has a set of four atop Clarence Mill. Crescent Community Radio also has a set of four. The above all use sets of four because they radiate lower power levels. Capital Manchester, Radio X90s and Radio X all use a set of eight on the top of City Tower in central Manchester. There's eight because all three stations are using the antenna at one kilowatt. Double stack slant folded dipoles are commonly used for commercial, local and community radio. Unity and Gadio share this setup on the top of Portland Tower in Manchester. Legacy FM on Grafton Court in Manchester also uses this type of antenna. Another hard to identify type in local and community radio is the vertical. Oldham Community Radio's vertical is lost within the dozens of other antennas on the top of Oldham Civic Centre. Your FM on the top of Ratcliffe Towers in Stockport is also easily lost amongst the police antennas that populate the neighbouring block. Withinshore FM also uses a vertical with three radials at the base. This shows that band 2 antennas come in all different shapes and sizes. Tameside Radio uses this type of mixed polarised antenna from Harrop Edge. The name of it escapes me, but they're another easy identifiable piece of kit. Capital Liverpool from Liverpool Cathedral utilises two of them stacked. Again, looking at the power difference between the two stations, it's easy to see why Capital uses two. Another very identifiable antenna is the Sierra FMC 0 1 and the like. These are circular or elliptical polarised antennas, also known as a ring antenna. A pair of these are used on Great Orm's Head in Clandidno for Classic FM. Just as band 2 aerials are complex, how they're fed is just as complicated. Many main sites are fed by fibre, for example home moss. That's not to say that other smaller sites aren't fed by fibre too. Many commercial, local and community stations use fibre feeds. Some stations use a studio to transmit a link over radio. This is known as an STL. At smaller sites such as Buxton, BBC Radio Derby is fed by these two four-element Yagis. This is an RBL or rebroadcast link, which is typically used when there's no direct signal path from the transmitter to the studio. Also at Buxton, these log periodics are used for the BBC National Feed. They're characterised by the white cap on the end. An identical antenna can be seen at Saddleworth for the BBC National Feed from the nearby Home Moss. This horizontal folded dipole on the roof of Bolton FM studio sends the feed up to the transmitter at Dove Mill in Bolton. Up there you can see the reciprocal studio to transmitter link dipole. Heritage FM at Wally Range in Manchester utilises a 5.8 GHz microwave link to send the studio feed up to the transmitter at Duffield Court. Again, the reciprocal antenna can be seen. Your FM in Stockport uses this shrouded log periodic for its STL, and stations such as Legacy FM use L-band shrouded Yagis.
This one sends the studio feed up to the transmitter site on Grafton Court. Many of these L-band links can be seen, especially at local and community radio stations. If you're at a transmitter site and you see a Yagi such as this relatively low down, you can almost guarantee it's receiving a studio feed from somewhere. Now let's look at DAB. These antennas are visibly different to band 2 FM antennas. DAB band 3 antennas to my knowledge are all vertically polarised, so that's a starting point when it comes to identifying them. We'll start with a main site such as Morley Park. This is the main national DAB array. Like the national band 2 antennas, multiple stations are radiated from here. The difference with DAB is that they're not stations as such, but rather multiplexes that carry multiple stations within. To make things even more confusing, it's not uncommon to find a DAB and band 2 array using the same space on a mast. You'll note that the elements on the Moyle Park array are visually similar to the UHF television antenna at Birch Vale. Home Moss has another sizeable DAB array. Interestingly, while Moyle Parks is a three sided setup, Home Moss's is four sided. A much smaller version of these antennas can be seen at relay sites like Glossop, where there are two DAB dipoles mounted against a screen. Birch Vale is very much the same. Buxton has two small dipoles but without the screen. And so does Stocksbridge. A perhaps more impressive example is the stacked dipoles on top of St John's Beacon in central Liverpool. Another common DAB install are these sets of Yagi antennas such as this example at Saddleworth. Small scale DAB sites often use a simple vertical. Wernerth Low SSDAB is a great example. Reservoir Road in Liverpool is on the side of a house and also consists of a vertical. Where multiple sites radiate the same programming, you'll notice a GPS antenna nearby. This is used to ensure that both transmitters are timed exactly to avoid distortion or multipath effects. As for feeds, most DAB transmitters are fed by fibre, but the BBC National DAB sites have a satellite dish within the grounds. Whether this is a primary or backup feed, and at what sites, I'm not certain. Glossop, Saddleworth, Buxton and the likes all have them. So that's a complex, but believe it or not, top line overview of television and radio broadcast antennas in the UK. Incidentally, if you'd like to see some US transmitter sites such as the World Trade Centre, Four Times Square and the Empire State Building, I'll link my videos below. Any corrections of course are welcome, but please remember I did say there are exceptions to the rule in most of the cases I've discussed. If you'd like to see more videos on medium wave and long wave sites, as well as the non-broadcast stuff, then let me know in the comments.